batteries have gotten really good. Battery warranties are really long. But what happens, man? What's going to go down? My, you know, once the second my warranty expires, the battery's going to die and it's going to cost me $30,000 and I'll never recover from this financially. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but I've got with me an expert here, Alex from QC Charge. Uh, there's a shop here in Portland that fixes uh, electric cars, specifically ones that are not necessarily under warranty. Uh, Alex here uh, has been working on electric cars for how long now? Uh, so I've been working on electric cars for going on seven years now. Mostly Tesla powered stuff, but a little bit of everything, a lot of Nissan Leaf and, and that kind of thing. Sure. And uh, when he says Tesla powered, that includes beasts like this guy right here. Yeah, so we've got uh, the 2012 to 2014 Toyota RAV4 EV and the 2014 to 2017 Mercedes B-Class, which were built, both built under partnerships with Tesla. So they're essentially almost identical to an early Model S powertrain, just with a slightly smaller battery. Isn't it crazy? Those were different times. So you've seen, now, now this won't, we won't be discussing things like um, the new Toyota battery that has 150,000 mile warranty because uh, that's under warranty. As long as it's under warranty, who cares? If it dies, you get a new battery. Exactly. For free. Uh, and we're, so we also won't be discussing a whole lot of cars that are newer than five, six years uh, because those are also under warranty. But we can talk about a lot of cars because EVs have been around for a little while now. What are some common cars that have battery failures and how expensive is it and how common is it, I guess? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a number of different types of battery failures and some are failures of the actual batteries, you know, themselves. So you get, you know, a dead cell or uh, a extreme amount of degradation. Um, but then there's other types of failures too. So you can have other types of component hardware failures in the battery with uh, electronics or wiring or uh, the main contactor. So those are the relay that connects the battery to the rest of the car. Those are things that can fail as well. And a lot of those things are repairable without replacing the whole battery. So if it's a connector between the battery and say the charger, the high volt, you know, the, the charge coming in, or it's a connect, you know, one of those things, that's not, it'll feel, it might feel like your battery's dead because it ain't charging, right? Yep but it could be an easy fix. Yeah, exactly. And in the case of a lot of the older, particularly compliance cars like the RAV4 or the Focus Electric that we have here, um, if something like the set of battery contactors or something else in the battery fails, as far as the dealer's concerned, the whole battery needs to be replaced. They don't open them up to perform repairs and that's where shops like us come in. So on cars like the RAV4, the contactors are actually a pretty common failure mode. It's actually the same contactor sh shared with the Model S and those also have the same type of failures. Um, of course, as far as Tesla's concerned, they actually do perform that repair and it's not terribly expensive, but when it comes to a car like the RAV4. A car that they made a few thousand of instead of a few million of. Exactly, yeah. Now, when you've got uh, a, let's talk about like the Nissan Leaf. Here in the Northwest, those survived, those batteries survived really well, in my opinion, because they are air-cooled. That's not the best solution. Yeah. But uh, in the Northwest, they didn't, they weren't prone to 100 degree temperatures or zero degree temperatures. They did all right. How, how are the failures on those going, old Leafs? Yeah, so the biggest thing on, on the older Leafs is heat. That's the thing that really kills them. And of course, in conjunction with that is for owners that did a lot of uh, CHAdeMO DC fast charging. Fast charging introduces a lot of heat to the battery as well. So that kind of plays into that. Um, and yeah, in milder climates like up here in the Pacific Northwest, they've generally held up pretty well. The very earliest cars are the ones that are the worst for the issues, the 11 and 12. Once you get to the 13 and newer, they kind of made incremental improvements over time. Um, but and, yeah. and that's to the chemistry, that's to the battery management system, that's to all of it. That it's to the, the battery chemistry, yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the last version of, we'll call it the legacy 24 kilowatt hour leaf battery, they called a lizard pack because it held up to the heat better. Um, and yeah, that's like the 2015 and 2016 uh, 24 kilowatt hour batteries. And those are pretty well regarded as the best of the 24s. When was the last mainstream electric car 
that didn't have liquid cooling for the battery? Um, well, the Leaf is still on sale with no liquid cooling. Really? Still? Yep. It still has no liquid yeah, cooling? Yeah, so the, the, the larger size battery Leaf that uses either the 40 kilowatt hour or the 62 kilowatt hour battery, they're the same way. No, no cooling whatsoever. So it's just passive. Yeah. I guess if it works. I yep. guess if it works. The, 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 the Leaf that's built today is pretty much largely the same car that they've been building since 2013. Just slightly less ugly. Just slightly less ugly. They, <laughs> they made updates to the, to the body and they made the battery bigger. But as far as the electronics and everything, almost everything is the same. Even the motor is the exact same motor they've been using wow. since 2013. Yeah. Wow. When someone has a leaf and the, motor di and the battery dies, are they fixing it still or are they chucking it? It depends. So, I mean, for a lot of people, there's a lot of people that have done battery upgrades. So I've done a number of battery upgrades on the Leafs, uh, but it's pretty expensive. Um, there's such a high demand for it because there's a lot of Leafs out there with high degradation on the battery. So a lot of people want to do the upgrades and it drives the prices up pretty high. So it makes them pretty expensive to do. For people that really, really like the Leaf, that want to justify the cost to do that, there's, there's people that, that do it. Um, you can also swap in just a better condition stock size battery. And there's kind of an increasing number of aftermarket batteries, usually from Chinese suppliers. Hmm. I've personally dealt with a couple of those and they seem pretty decent, but they're a real hassle to get here in the US, so. <laughs> so let's talk about Tesla. Uh, you have extensive experience with Tesla drivetrains your shop and the other QC shop in San Diego has um, been working on various Tesla products and service for how long now, 12 years? Um, well, so the business first got started on charging equipment and actually the RAV4 EV here was one of the vehicles that we built a DC fast charging kit for. Uh, RAV4 didn't have fast charging originally and we had a kit to add Chatamo to it. This car was got, what got us started in the service side for the cars. And we first started really doing service on them starting about six and a half, seven years ago. And at first it just started, you know, one or two cars at a time. And it just kind of blew up, especially over the last four plus years, kind of at the start of the pandemic was what was really the catalyst for that. And that now it's our, our main business is doing the repairs on the cars. So on the Teslas, You've swapped out batteries. Um, I haven't done a lot of swaps on the Model S. Okay. Um, there's a lot of other places that specialize in that kind of thing. I have done a few battery repairs. I actually just finished up doing some repairs on the red Model S out here. It actually had a, an external moisture intrusion issue. Oh. Um, but our big specialty is actually in rebuilding the large drive unit. So that's the motor that's used in a lot of the early Model S's as well as the RAV4 and the Is that vehicles. that over there? Yeah, so we've got a, actually a large drive unit on the stand right here. So this is uh, a performance variant of the large drive unit out of a Model S. You can see we have a lot of the parts all laid out on the table here. So we have the inverter, the rotor. This is the part of the motor that spins. Under the table we have the, the gear train. Um, and mechanically, all of the large drive units are more or less the same. Um, at least as far as Model S is concerned. So the difference between a base and a performance, the only thing that's different is the electronics here. Hmm. Um, but there's kind of a fatal flaw in these drive units, and that is the rotor coolant seal. And the problem is when that seal fails, it causes a coolant leak inside of the motor. So I've actually got a, a number of examples right here, but that's the seal that fails right there. Uh -huh. And that will destroy the drive unit if too much coolant leaks in there. So um, we try to catch them early before it destroys things. And we have modifications to mitigate those issues. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I don't know if you heard this, and uh, I don't know if you'd want me saying his name, but there was a gentleman at the presentation here two months ago who I know works for a well-known chip company. Okay. And I asked him, how much of this can be miniaturized down to nothing? And his answer was, um, it's known, it's understood, it's extremely expensive. 
yeah. which is why no one um, has done it yet because it would be difficult. Yeah, well, so these days, actually, inverters have gotten a lot smaller than this. I, I meant all the chips and whatnot inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you have your, so where all these little silver tabs are, mm -hmm. those are all the, that's all the switching that okay. does the conversion from DC to oh. AC. And those have gotten a lot smaller. That's mm -hmm. the big part that makes the inverters a lot smaller. And now, if you look at the inverter on, say, a Model 3, it's probably a third or a quarter of the size of this. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. And uh, smaller, lighter, as long as the thermal management's good, it's good. Yep, yeah, exactly. So if somebody is worried that their battery is going to go out on them, it's a reasonable, I get it. Do you have an understanding of how the cost of replacing a battery, including labor, would stack up against, say, a, a motor or transmission in a car? Yeah, so a full-on battery replacement, of course, is going to vary from car to car, right? Yes. Just, just like anything, you know. And if you're getting it at the dealer or a shop, I yep. mean, there are variables. Is it new? Is it reconditioned? Exactly, yeah. So, so um, you know, some of the, the cheapest uh, batteries as far as Tesla's go. Uh, the Model 3 and Model Y batteries are at the lower end of the spectrum, especially for a remanufactured pack. When you get into the Model S, they, the price goes up a little bit, not insanely high. They're still fairly spendy, but then there's also the used market for, for batteries. So say, for example, if you were to look at a remanufactured battery for a Model S, typically you're going to be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of about 15000 With labor? Yep, that's all inclusive uh, for a remanufactured battery, yeah. Do you know what it costs to get a new motor in a Mercedes S-Class? You're probably looking at somewhere in that same neighborhood, exactly. <laughs> it depends. It, 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 there's a lot of variability. Right. There's but a lot yes, of variability. It's yeah. going to be, in both cases, you're going to really need to make some tough choices that are going to be difficult. And in a lot of cases, you will just sell the car to someone who's going to part it out. Because by the time your battery fails on one of these cars, the warranty is now eight year, 100,000 mile, down from what it has been in the past when they were trying to spur adoption. Yep. Uh, we will have another video talking about that because uh, Alex has got a fantastic story about just how crazy that gets. But there are a lot of opportunities to uh, figure out whether or not that makes sense for you. Do you think someone looking at a used electric vehicle should concern themselves with the likelihood of a catastrophic battery failure outside of warranty any more than someone would on a comparable internal combustion vehicle being worried about a catastrophic failure of the engine or transmission? Probably not really. I mean, any used car purchase, you're always going to want to do your due, dil due diligence and ideally get a, an inspection done before you purchase it. Um, but really, it's not any more of a concern than any other car, right? So any car, you could have a, an engine or transmission failure, just like you could have a battery failure on an EV. So there you go. My question is, uh, does this put your mind at ease or does it make you more upset? I don't know. Uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you can't do that, then maybe just uh, like or subscribe or do one of those many other things. And stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots the next time I manage to drag Alex on camera.